everyone, I'm back. And I wanted to add another segment today because I had a question in the Ask Stitch Mistress thread on, in my Ravelry group. And Cozy, Cozy Couch, um, a longtime listener and viewer, asked questions about Nitty Knotties. And I wanted to go over um, what a Nitty Knotty is and why you might want one, um, even if you're not a spinner, and why it would be useful for you, even, again, if you're not a spinner. They're very useful to spinners. Um, I actually don't really use my knitties so much anymore because I have a Shocked Ultra Umbrella Swift, which is an amazing, amazing tool. If you spin a lot like I do, uh, this past year I was spinning a lot, and I just invested in this Umbrella Swift, and it's incredible. Um, and it not only winds skeins that I've spun, but it also um, helps me wind balls of yarn on my ball winder. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a future show. But the Nitty Knotty is a lovely, wonderful, useful tool if you are any sort of fiber artist because you can wind skeins. And why would you want to wind a skein if you're not a spinner? Well, if you've frogged an item, you um, might want to wind the skein of the frogged yarn and then soak it um, to get the kinks out. And that's a great, this is a great tool for that because you're not going to get the tangling. <laughs> I've done that before without this, and yeah, you get some tangling. So anyway, I thought I would um, talk a little bit about these and uh, do a short tutorial. So this is a small midi knotty, and I'm going to use this for the tutorial because it fits nicely into my camera frame. You'll be able to see it quite well. It's, it will wind a one yard skein all the way around. A continuous loop will be one yard. This bigger guy, big brother, big sister, is a two yard nitty knotty. I, I use this more often than my smaller one because it makes a nice big loop, a nice big skein. Um, but the small one is useful for when I go to a fiber festival or a fiber, um, a spinning class and we have to wind off our singles after we've learned something and we can just stick them on here. So this is, that's why I got, I have the, I have both sizes. I think either size would work for you. Um, if you're winding a giant skein from a sweater you frogged, you might want the bigger one. Um, they're available. You can get them online. The Woolery has them. Um, I'll put some links in the show notes to places that I found them. I bought these at Rhinebeck a few years ago. So the other thing is how to use this. This, when I first got mine, a friend had taught me and I instantly forgot how to do it as soon as I got home. And so I went on YouTube to find some videos. And there's, there aren't great videos out there on how to use these. They don't go slow enough. So I'm putting one out there. And I'll put this up as a standalone video as well for those of you who don't want to go back to my episode to find this. So here we go. Let's start winding on this one yard nitty knotty. Now if you look, what's nice about this nitty knotty, and this is a Kromsky nitty knotty, and what I like about this one is that it has a smooth end, and you can get your skein off, it slides right off very nicely, and it has a hooked end. And on the other side, it also has a smooth end and a hooked end. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to keep the hooked ends on one side and the smooth ends on the other, just for teaching purposes. You can do it the other way if you want. You could turn it. The other question CK has is why do these tops come off and why do they turn? 
there's a very good reason for why they turn is because we are not going to wind our yarns with these ends parallel to one another. We're going to have to turn this, turn the top one, um, in order to wind our skein. So this is, this is how I have it set up. You could set it up this way um, when you learn how to do this. And I'll try and go as slow as I can to give you a really clean, clear tutorial. So I have, I also marked them off in colors with my trusty highlighter tape. Very useful tool for knitters for charts. I wouldn't want to be knitting that GAAA blanket without without the, that tape because it really keeps me knowing where my place is in a chart. Okay, so what I have here is I have my hooked ends pointing to my right. And um, I have them marked in yellow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this hooked end, the top, and I'm going to turn that so the hook is pointing toward my nose, pointing toward my face or my body, because you're going to be winding probably down here. Okay, so the hook then is pointing toward my nose. The other hook then continues to point to my, to my right. So now, instead of being parallel, they are perpendicular. You don't forget this step because you're going to get it's not going to be possible or easy to wind if you don't if you don't move this end. So parallel in order to start out to store it and then to wind we turn that and I have the hooked end toward my nose. Okay. Now, if you see my hand is wrapped around the middle of the knotty, that's how I start winding. So I have a scrap ball of yarn here, Malabrigo Rios. I had made a pair of socks out of it, and it's my scrap. I'll show you the socks after if you're interested. So I have my ball of yarn with my end, and I'm going to take my end, and I'm going to grab it with my left hand. And I, I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left hand here. Okay. Then I can drop my ball and I just have my, my um, yarn here in my right hand. Okay, grabbing with the left yarn in the right. Now, I start by going down. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna go down to the bottom hook, yellow. Then I'm gonna go up to the top hook, yellow. Then I'm going to come then I'm going to kind of turn it. See how I did that? Up to top, then I kind of turn it and go down to pink smooth end, up to pink smooth end. I've do just done my first revolution. All you have to do now once you get the first one done is to just keep following. So now following the same path that you started. So now I'm going to go down again, yellow, yellow, pink, pink, yellow, yellow, pink, pink, hook, hook, smooth, smooth, hook, hook, smooth, smooth, hook, hook, smooth, smooth, hook, hook, smooth, smooth, and so on. My arm's getting really tired. <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it as far as winding. Now, when you're done winding, it'll, it'll stay on here pretty well. And you're going to tie this. 
Now this one, since it's so short, you really only need one tie. So for each strand, you would put one tie. And then if you have a longer one, what I'll do is I'll put two ties. So a tie here, a tie here, a tie here, a tie here, and so on. So I would have eight ties in a long um, two yard skein. And that keeps it really nice and stable for when you wash it and then it's not gonna tangle up you know, when the water hits it. So yeah, that's it guys. If you have any questions, just, just put a, um, a message in the Ravelry group or you can PM me on Ravelry. Um, like the video if you like the tutorial. After you wash these, by the way, um, hang your skein on a towel rack or, or a drying rack or of some kind. Do not weight it. I would not recommend you weight your skein, even though you might have some, some um, crinkles left. If you weigh it, it's just going to stretch out your yarn. And I don't think that's really desirable. What you can do when the skein is wet, I don't think I have a skein here I can do it with. Or I just, Oh yeah, I do. Hang on one second. I'm just going to walk away from the camera and I have a skein over here. So if you have a wet skein, see, this was not done on a nitty knotty. <laughs> It was done on my shocked umbrella swift. Um, what you can do when it's wet and it comes out, you can snap it and stretch it. Just snap it like that and stretch it out and some of the kinks will come out that way. Just snap it, then hang, just like that. And your yarn will be very easy to knit or store um, in any way that you see fit. Here, you want to see my socks? These are worsted weight socks, nice and warm. And I have them on the blocker so I could take a picture, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> These actually are a sample that I made for the knitting store, so I need to give them back. Cold and I want to wear them. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. And again, like this video if you found it useful. And I will be talking to you soon.